Change of scenery. What do you guys think? I think yes. I kind of have four things that uh, I need to get done. I'm meeting Cody here. Uh, I'm gonna do an editing project for him. Uh, I wanna do a video about low light, shooting with the kit lens, what I'm using now, but also other lenses that work better for low light, because you know, the kit lens isn't a good low light lens, but I want to show how you can use it until you're able to get uh, a better lens with a wider aperture. And the fourth thing I need to do is keep testing out that speed booster. I wanna go ahead and get that done because I know a lot of people have questions about that and what lenses work with it, what lenses don't. First of all, I need to wait. I mean, it's not, not, not too dark yet, so low light when it's not dark isn't a very good project. But I'm gonna go and meet uh, Cody for my first part of this. Right. How's it going, man? It's going well. That was a good, strong meeting. I have to meet with him again for uh, two more times make sure I can seal that deal on Monday, so. <laughs> we'll see you later. Okay, so business went too long. Uh, we didn't end up getting any video stuff done. We're gonna try and get to that a little bit later. Well, that didn't exactly go as planned. I like had this entire video planned out with tons of awesome B-roll of Cody and me down in Mayfair. I guess it just goes to show you that sometimes stuff works out and you can do these epic videos and sometimes you just gotta figure out other ways of telling stories. So first of all, I want to talk about the kit lens and sort of how to get a little bit better of video with the kit lens because as we all know, it's not a very fast lens. And I mean, even this scenario right here, 3.5 and my, my face is in darkness practically because I just, I only have a couple of street lights. So first of all, you have to find somewhere that has light. I mean, this isn't a low light monster. So my biggest tip is, is find somewhere with light. Now, during Christmas time, you can find a lot better places in like even small towns because they're all lit up for Christmas. But using stuff like a storefront, that, that's a good way of getting soft light on your subject, which is gonna look a lot more flattering than something like a street light. So the first key is look for light. You can use something like a street light, but that's gonna give a kind of harsh, unflattering light, and it's not gonna look very good on your face or any of your subjects. Or you can try and do something like what I'm doing right now, where I have two street lights right behind me, and they're actually bouncing off of this concrete monument, which is giving me a soft, bounced light. And that's just a little hack that you can try, is find a light-colored object near lights, and then use your street lights as sort of an edge light, but then use your wall or your concrete monument in order to bounce that light off to light up your face better. Right here, I'm literally just using a light from an ATM and it's giving a good light on my face. Now, of course, this isn't gonna give you like a cinematic B-roll segment, this type of a light, but if you're doing something like a talking segment and you need to have your kit lens instead of something like your B-roll lens on there that has a wider aperture, something like this totally works. If worse comes to worse, you can use like a spotlight that's lighting up a building or something, but it just doesn't look that good. And it makes your background darker, so it basically looks like you're in the middle of nowhere. And it just, it doesn't help as much with the storytelling I, I found. And I, I would suggest trying to find a softer source. Now for your ISO, you don't want to go above 1600. Most of the video that I've shot out here tonight has been at 1600. 
but anything higher than that and I think the noise becomes distracting from your video. I mean this is still, I mean, I still got noise in this shot. It's not completely noise free or anything, but I don't think it would distract the average person from what you're talking about. Of course, as low as you could get it is always good, but I mean, if you have to, you could. Throw it up to 25,600, but I mean, I don't even have to say anything. My final tip is sort of just embrace the fact that it's night. I mean, no one's going to expect you to have entirely, perfectly exposed video when you're vlogging at night. People are gonna expect to have slightly underexposed footage. And so kind of embrace that and know that you're not going to get perfect exposure and just do the best that you can and don't let it distract you from telling good stories because that's what people are mainly going going to be coming to your channel for, not just for your epic footage and amazing low light. You'll have some who come to your channel for that, but for the most part, people are going to be coming because they like your personality, they like the stories that you tell, and these are the things that you need to be focusing on, not just the production stuff. Now I believe we should have as best production as possible, but you need to be focusing on your story and communicating in an effective way with your audience. And this is what's gonna help us grow, not just as video makers or YouTubers, but as storytellers. Now I was gonna give some tips on how to do B-roll at night, but I think we need to have an entire video devoted to that because there was like a lot there and a lot more than I originally was thinking about. But just so you don't walk away from this video with nothing, the two things I would suggest is avoid slow motion when you can or unless you have a lot of light and a shoot as wide apertures as possible. Those are gonna be the biggest tips that I have off the bat but we're gonna do a whole video devoted to that, so stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> I have to say this speed booster for night shooting, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Uh, I, there was, there's a couple of not so great things about it. It drains your battery even if your camera's off, so at least one quirk of this thing is that you have to take it off when you're not using it. But f1.2 with a hundred dollar lens, I mean, that is pretty impressive.